we're not just a junkyard. Um, the stuff does not come out here and just park and sit and, and rust and deteriorate. Don Olson is in the business of recycling. Combat vehicles, um, tanks, armor personnel carriers, um, trailers, trucks, um, fuel tankers, water tankers, um, heavy construction equipment. Bulldozers, it's light sets, it's gators, it's ATVs. This is the Sierra Army Depot. It is a 36,000 acre patch of land in Herlong, California. And it is where the military and the Army stores their equipment and actually sends it out so that it doesn't have just one life but two, pinching every penny and every dollar so that taxpayer money isn't wasted after the war is finally over. Um, this stuff has been used once. Um, and we bring that value back by having it being reused again. Sierra is America's largest repository of military equipment returning from war. 26,000 vehicles and over $1 billion worth of clothing have been shipped here on planes, trucks, and trains. If it can still shoot, roll, or otherwise function, Don and his team take it into inventory, fix it up, and ship it right back out to troops. And we're not just talking about big ticket items. So you can see the workers here that are actually processing the material. They're opening the boxes to see if what's inside. It's an in engine starter. Um, I don't know, hundreds of dollars um, for a big truck. There's cables. Um, there's filter systems. There's a steering wheel. It's not sexy stuff. But if we did not do this, the Army would be buying all of this again. And they're not having to do that now. How many different types of things, tidbits, are we are we talking about here? Um, millions. Um, literally anything that's in the Army supply system, we could receive here. Anything. So it's kind of like a big Home Depot where it, they can just go it, to it, aisle C4. Yeah, it it, it kind of is. In an age where the military's belt is tightening through sequestration, drawdowns, and troop cuts, anyone who can save the Pentagon a penny is quite an asset. One stark example. Armor used in soldiers' vests. Previously, we would throw these away, and the Army would buy a new one, about 500 bucks. And we got with the manufacturer, and we said, "Look, can, can we do something to this to make it usable again for the soldier, at a cost savings to the Army?" So we now have a process we've identified where we can fix all of these little def deficiencies that are on the end. And the process is simple. Heat the area up. She'll apply this, the tape on there and seal it back on. It's permanently sealed, and it's just like it was manufactured brand new at the factory. The team then sends the plates through an x-ray to look for cracks and puts each one through a stress test. Two million plates and counting. It costs us about $16 each to fix. Um, we saved the Army huge amounts of money. In another warehouse, workers sort through clothing, then create a kit for individual soldiers based on their size and needs. We pick the items for each soldier, we pack them in the boxes, and then we put them on a UPS truck and we ship them out of here. We do this better than anybody in the world. It's the largest scale operation of anybody in the world that does this kind of, uh, of a job. But with the war in Afghanistan finally coming to a close, more equipment is coming in than ever before. The question now is what to do with these former war machines. For that, the military is getting creative. This trailer is a water purification system. It could soon be deployed to natural disaster sites. Humvees and MRAPs are being stripped of their heavy armor and repurposed for civilian use. And the list goes on. What can't be scrapped or salvaged is sold to the highest bidder, often allied militaries, sometimes local law enforcement. It's all about that trying to wring some value out of something that may previously have not had value, specifically the returned items. Anything to save the military a few bucks now that the war drums have finally stopped beating. Reporting in Herlong, California, Megan Lopez, RT.